Hello everyone, my name is Hal. This is Coil Studios Guitar. Welcome to my live stream. And today we are going to talk a little bit about arranging for finger style. Let's look at the comments here. Uh, Dean says it's very bright in Hurricane Utah this morning. Bob is there. Mike Lee. Hello Mike. The reason I'm actually doing this particular version of uh, I mean, talking about finger style and still staying with While My Guitar Gently Weeps just for this particular live stream. I've had some requests to do a finger style uh, arrangement and to put tabs out and that kind of thing. And uh, I want to talk about that just a little bit. Now, my goal for you, for a guitar player, for your development, is that you can do this by yourself. That eventually you don't need me. Hello, Bjorn. And hello, Albert, <laughs> welcome. This is why I'm even talking about this this morning. There are certain skills that you will need to make your own tabs, but I'm gonna walk you through what I do. Hello from Florida, there's Tim. When I make an, an arrangement, when I think about an arrangement, the first thing I ask with for myself is, is this arrangement going to be with a vocalist or not with a vocalist? Because that matters. I also ask myself, what key am I going to put this in? Am I going to put it in the original key? For While My Guitar Gently Weeps, it's in uh, A minor. I look at you all. Right? Sometimes I ask myself, you know, am I going to use a capo? Do I need a capo? Do I want a capo? Is there any reason for a capo? Uh, this particular song, I never used a capo before when I played it. Sometimes I'll put a capo on something, especially if I'm doing a... Uh, a finger style thing because you know down here if we're reaching on this part of the guitar then it's harder because the frets are farther apart than they are up here so sometimes I'll even put a capo on to be able to reach some things that I can't reach down there of course that changes the key when you want to do your own finger style right you want to well obviously everybody's on a different level what you want to do is you want to figure out where the melody is this is the one we're doing. I'm going to make some mistakes, and I hope you don't mind, but that's what I do. I figure out the melody. Can you figure out where it is? Now, in the A minor key, I look. There's, there's notes right here. And it's in the chord. And then I have to lift up my finger. And then we got the F chord. And then, and then we've got a problem because I gotta do that. And you can do the melody here. Right? So you could figure out the melody on the upper strings, or you can figure out down here. That's really super important if you're gonna do a finger style arrangement, because you have to know where those notes are. Also, the chords. Are you going to play the regular chords that they do in, uh, in the arrangement when somebody is singing? Or are you going to play the chords differently? And this is where understanding, um, what do you call it? The caged system. Now, I have a video on the caged system. You can do, if you know the, about the caged system, you got a C chord there. C chord there, C chord there, C chord there, and a C chord here, right? Because it's C, A, these are the shapes, C, A, G, or here, G, E, and the D shape. And if you understand how that works, the caged system, then you can figure out, oh, I need a C chord or an A minor chord. You could do it here, you could do it here, right? Depending on if you need, for instance, if, you know, there's my, I look at you all, or I look at you all, it's an octave higher, right? Then you can do the arrangement there. Understanding how to put chords in different places and which ones you need are really important. All right, let me show you a video. All right, now this is Justin Johnson. He's got 1.2 million subscribers. 
I've never seen him before. This is the first time I've ever seen him. This is amazing. Now he's using the standard chords, right? And if you'll notice, he uses his thumb over the top to do those low bass notes. Uh, now I've skipped to a different part where he starts doing the melody. That first part was the, the introduction. Now watch his thumb go over the top, second fret, first fret. Now he's got big hands, right? And the question I have, can I do that? Do I have big enough hands to do that particular thing? Uh, he's using a Paul Reed Smith guitar. It's a smaller body. I don't know if it's a, I don't, I'm not even going to try to guess what it is. But anyway, beautiful guitar, beautiful sound. It's great. Now here is, it, he's called Red Tabber. I don't know his name. He's got 30K subscribers, but here's an arrangement that this guy did. And it's uh, mostly classical. He's got tabs. So I don't know if uh, Red Tabber has tabs that you can download or buy. I think Justin Johnson has tabs that you can buy. Here's Sky Guitar. Now I've seen Sky Guitar before. I don't know the guy's name. He's got 425,000 subscribers. He does great work. He's got tabs available. Pretty standard classical. He's doing uh, the chords. Only this is in D minor. Okay, here's uh, one of my favorites, Kelly Value. He's got 478,000 subscribers. You can go to his... Let me stop that so I don't talk over the top of it. He's got a website, and you can buy his tabs from him. Uh, he's fantastic. I love him a lot. Now, look at this. He's got a, a capo on the fifth fret, and he's playing it in A minor, which is the original key. Uh, but, you know, he's got uh, a different arrangement, and he's got a high melody to start with. Okay, so E minor, he's playing an E minor chord, but it's actually, I love this. This arrangement makes the bass notes easier to do. You don't have to do your thumb over the top. Okay, I switch to another section. Look at this, look at this. He's doing a percussion with his right hand. He's got like four or five cameras that he uses. It's pretty fun. All right. Now this is Luca Stricagnoli. Sounds like he's from Italy or something. I have no idea. I just found him today, this morning. And he's got this thing that he's putting on his guitar. It's called, he calls it the reverse slide neck. It's his own invention. Check it out. This is, this is amazing. I watched. That's amazing. This is really, this blows my mind. This reverse slide neck thing that he's got going on. I'm not going to be able to do what uh, Luca does. What can you do is the question. As I was playing around with this, I really like the idea of putting the, the capo on the fifth fret. Right? That's kind of cool. And one of the things I think about is if I were to do that, I'd have an E minor chord. I look at you all in da -da 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 -da. Now I was playing around with this yesterday and I kind of noticed that we could do, and I kind of took some ideas from Kelly Value. I'm doing the bass note right there. That's an E minor chord. Now what Kelly did is he actually did um, he actually played this note and then he went to here. But you could do this too. And then here. And then he went here. And then he went here. Right? So that's kind of interesting. And yesterday I figured out something. I made a mistake. And I love mistakes. Hello from Korea. Hello, hello. 
I'm going to do, now I'm going to do a half step down. Okay, wait. Or you could do it the other way. This is the way that uh, it's actually written. And go here. Right? So that's kind of a cool thing. And if I actually play... And I look at you all And the love there that's sleeping While my guitar gently See, one of the things I'm doing here is I'm just exploring what are the chords I need to use to be able to do this finger style. And then I realized, you know, if I wanted to, if I wanted to actually play it that way and sing, and I didn't want to sing that high, I could take the capo down. I look at you all, see the love there that's sleeping While my guitar gently could take the capo off, right? And then all of a sudden it's really accessible to lower voices. I look at you all, see the love that's sleeping, while my guitar gently reaps. That's a chord. Or a B chord. So this is really kind of an interesting thing. I was exploring the ideas where the chords are and all that kind of thing. Because then you could go. And do the arrangement like this. And then here. Now when you go up here. Now you're back to an E minor chord. So you got to use something like this. Right here. And then it's a D chord. And then we got a G chord. No, an A chord. Oh, then it's an E note open. I'm just doing this, you know, improvising. Something like that. And then it goes to do. Oh yeah, G. And then a B chord. Or a B7. And then it goes. Let's see. I don't know. Which is really interesting too. I don't know why. That's a uh, G sharp minor going to a C sharp minor. F sharp minor. I would divert to do. Now, in my arrangement that I did before, I was telling you that I didn't do those bass notes. Didn't do that rising bass note on that E chord. Right? In that section. Because I couldn't reach it. But if I did it this way... Oops, wrong chord. See that? So what I've actually done here is that now we're exploring different chords, different keys, so we can decide where do we want to do this arrangement and how do we want to do this arrangement. Let me get my face back up here so I can see you guys. Let's keep going. So you got to decide what chords to use. Um, you got to match the melody with the chords, you know. Right? And, and I'm using a D, an E minor chord. E minor chord with a D bass. E minor chord with a C sharp bass. And actually, and then I did this one. And that's not really the chord, that's a C bass, and I'm still using the E minor with the melody, but it sounds cool. So it's like, oh, I'll do that. That's kind of what Kelly Value did. 
And how complicated do you want the arrangement? Do you want to just be able to play? Right, do you want to do that? Or do you want to do the bass note too? Go for the simple stuff first, right? And then make it more complicated. Right, you know? Right, and then you can make it more complicated later. Okay, so we talked about open position chords. You gotta know your open position chords. Right, so you can know what's going up the neck. You gotta know your bar chords different kinds of bar chords. Um, we talked about the cage system. I'm just going over my notes here. You got to find the melody high and low down here. It's good because if you watch the Kelly Value uh, arrangement of this, he plays low notes, he plays high notes. It's really cool. You don't have to do that. You can just do it in one place if you want to. But let's see, is there anything else? You can play melodies without chords. There, I talked about that. All right. Tabs make me dizzy. You know what, Mike? It took me a couple of years to really get comfortable with tabs as a teacher. I didn't really start reading tabs until 1991 because there were really no tabs in the store up until the 90s. Uh, you would get uh, music. It was like piano music with a vocal and then some guitar chords at the top. And then in the 90s, when I was teaching in the 90s, all of a sudden people started bringing me books with tabs in it. And I was like... How do I read this? Because I'd never really read tabs before. Took me a couple years to really get, you know. I don't see any other uh, things going on, no other comments. I'm going to take off and talk with my supporters. And if you want to become a supporter, look in the description, and you will see the ways that you can support me and how you can connect with me. We'll talk to you guys later. Really love seeing you all. Albert, Dean, Mike, Uber Gem, Sami. <laughs> there you go. Hey, it's good to see you. And then the Korea. Yes, thank you very much. I don't know your name because I can't read it, but I know you're from Korea. Did I miss anybody? Oh, yeah, Bob. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Take care. And anybody else that's out there, take care. Bye.